going on guys? I hope everyone is having a great day. So I have a ranking for you guys today, and we're actually going to be ranking all of the iconic slasher villains. And I'm pretty excited to do this because I mainly only ever talk about Michael Myers or Leatherface or on occasion Jason Voorhees. But I also want to let you guys know that I either like or love all of our iconic slasher villains. So I'm not just strictly a Michael and Leatherface guy. So this list will really only contain of the big slasher villains, the big iconic slasher villains, such as, you know, Jason, Freddy, Chucky, Ghostface, Leatherface, Pinhead, Michael Myers, you know, those, just strictly those characters. And maybe if you guys like this video, I can do one on smaller franchise slasher villains like The Hatchet and The Sleepaway Camp and all those other franchises and whatnot. So let's get right into this. In last place, we have Ghostface from the Scream franchise. Now, for the longest time, I actually hated Ghostface and the Scream franchise. I'm still really not a big fan of the franchise in general, but, you know, the first one is alright. I, ugh, I hate the second film. It's my least favorite in the franchise. I actually liked the third film better than the first and the second. And I hated the fourth one, and I did prefer the fifth film, the newest one, more than the fourth one, but it still really wasn't a good movie in my opinion. And the reason Ghostface is in last place is just not because I don't like the alter ego, because I do. But that's kind of the problem. It's an alter ego and not really a character for most of the people who dress up as Ghostface. As much as I like Scream 3, the only film that I really felt was truly necessary was the first, and it should have just been a one-off. I think the fact that some idiot in the later films always just gets this bright idea to dress up as the Ghostface killer just to attack Sidney Prescott, who has whipped every every freaking Ghostface character's ass, and then they still try to go after her and kill her, and, they, and then the mask comes off, and then they always have some stupid and ridiculous reason for taking on the alter ego. But with all that negativity out of the way, Ghostface's mask, in my opinion, has always been pretty pretty creepy. And I do like a couple of the kills in the franchise, even though that's not really... You know, what the, the Scream franchise is known for. But with time, I've come to respect this character in the franchise more than I did in the past. And I'd say my favorite Ghostface kill is actually probably from the new film. Where he kills Dylan Minnette's character by putting, uh... Oh, what does he do? He kills Dylan Minnette's character. If you haven't seen it, watch the movie. Alright, so next we have Chucky. And I do love Chucky. I'm mainly a fan of Child's Play 1, 2, and 3. I hated Bride. I hated the seed of Chucky even more. There were parts of Curse and Cult that I like. And, well, the remake had its fun moments. But Chucky, to me, really comes into his own in Child's Play 2, which is my favorite in the franchise. The reason I felt unsatisfied after the original with Chucky is because at that time, I don't think they really realized what they had with this, this character where I feel like they utilized Chucky the best in Part 2 and even Part 3. Chucky's one-liner, to me, his one-liners can get a little annoying, but then I have to remember that there should be some comedy thrown in since the killer is a talking doll, after all. But I also really adore Brad Dourif's performance as Chucky throughout the original series. And Mark Hamill wasn't too bad in the remake, it's just the remake, I think, had some problems. I did enjoy the remake to an extent, though, and... Chucky just never really scared me either. This is, I'm kind of basing this on the ones that really scared me the most. And my favorite kill in the franchise is actually Child's Play 3, where he kills the garbage man by putting him in the back of the garbage truck. That was freaking brutal. Alright, next we have Jason Voorhees. And Jason Voorhees seems to be everyone's favorite that I come across, but he was never mine. I was never scared of Jason growing up. I just never found him scary, but I did find him cool and intriguing. Parts 1 through 4 is the complete story of Friday the 13th to me. 5 and 6 had their moments. 7 and 8, Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X were just, they just all sucked. I just, I hated those movies. And I actually really enjoyed the Friday the 13th remake. Jason, in the remake, that was the one time that I believe I really truly felt scared of Jason. Um, I just never felt scared of him in the original series, maybe apart from a couple moments in 4, but uh, the remake Jason is pretty pretty hardcore, man. He, is, he doesn't fuck around, but, uh, you know, Jason is just kind of my, my go-to slasher for when I just want pure blood, guts, gore, and fucking carnage. 
Jason's kills are just really big and they're a spectacle where he buries cleavers in people's faces and he freaking picks up sleeping bags with naked chicks in them and starts bashing them against a tree. And Jason just really highlights that pure blood and guts type of slasher that I can go to when I need that blood soaked slasher experience, when I need to scratch that itch, if you know what I mean. The only issue I had, like I stated with Jason, was I just never found him scary, and I wish I did. And my favorite kill in the franchise would be in part four, where he buries a fucking meat cleaver in Crispin Glover's face. Alright, so moving on to Freddy Krueger. This is where we get into villains that I genuinely find scary. And in part one and two, parts one and two rather, Freddy is scary, and I love it. I love part one and two. Just to death. Three, eh, it's mad. I know that's a lot of people's favorite sequel or even their favorite in the franchise. To me, other than the Dawkins song, Dream Warriors, which that's an awesome song, just three doesn't do it for me. Four is where we start getting into what I don't like about the Elm Street franchise. Five and six are unwatchable, and, well, eh, New Nightmare was actually pretty good. I remember it being pretty good. And the remake, I did like the remake when I first saw it, but with time, I've grown to despise it, and I'll never watch it again. Two of some of the most scary scenes in slasher history to me actually belong to the Nightmare franchise. One of them being Tina's death in part one and Jesse's first encounter with Freddy in part two. Freddy was so scary in those first two films. I would even argue he was scarier in the second film than he was in the first one. But it really makes me not enjoy anything past part two. I know a lot of people don't like part two. Part two is actually my favorite in the franchise. Not, But yeah, that's not including New Nightmare because that's actually a good movie too. I didn't see Elm Street till I was about 12 or 13, and you would have thought that I would have grown out of that being scared of slashers, the big slashers, by that point in my life. But I remember feeling afraid after I sat and watched part two, or part one and two, rather. Then when I sat down to watch Dream Warriors, I was really let down. Uh, my favorite kill in the franchise has to be Tina's death. And I just got to mention that Robert Englund is just everything as Freddy Krueger. Alright, moving into my top three favorites of all time, and number three is Pinhead. Ooh, no, not you. Alright, now that's better. One of my favorite shots of Pinhead from one of my favorite, op it's the opening scene to the original film, and just one of my favorite just scenes ever in horror. It's so just bone-chilling and atmospheric. But uh, Pinhead, a Honda Pinhead. Pinhead is one that I just found absolutely terrifying. The original film is one of the greatest horror films ever made. And my first experience with this film was actually with my neighbor who loved horror. And he was a kid about my age, maybe a year, maybe a year or two older than I was. But I talked with him about horror characters like Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, and other big franchises while we were playing on my jungle gym when we were kids. And he, I remember him telling me that his favorite horror franchise was the Hellraiser franchise. And just that name I was very intrigued by. So I went over there later that night. I was just like, all right, you got to show me this movie. Because he had told me about this pinhead, this guy that had pins sticking out of his head. And he popped in his DVD. And after that film, I was terrified, man. And the second and the third film are serviceable sequels. And the fourth one offers a really satisfying ending. Stop at four. Please, guys, do not watch anything past four. Pinhead is at his most frightening in the original film. Just how evil he fucking is. The opening scene where they unleash their pleasures, the Cenobites, on Uncle Frank. He's just being ripped apart with hooks. It is brutal and terrifying. And the whole scene with the Cenobites, this is happening, just sets up... An, Sets up a perfect and amazing atmosphere and tone. The evilness of Pinhead is just... Oh, it's terrifying. And I just... I also really like as well... You uh, you don't see a whole lot of him in the original film. But when we do see him... We know... The, and as well as the Cenobites, we know they're not fucking around. It's kind of like Michael Myers. He works best in small doses. And you know that they're not playing games. If anything, I would just say stop after the first film and don't even watch the second film. Because the second film, to be honest with you, it's a very... The second one is really weird. And the ending is actually not very satisfying. The third one is a blood-soaked slasher movie ride that you'd probably come to expect. But that 
I mean, I think some of you would probably enjoy the third film more than the second film, but that original film is truly a terrifying horror classic, and for those of you who haven't seen it, watch it. You will not be disappointed. My favorite kill in the franchise, I gotta say, is Uncle Frank in the opening, where he's just being ripped apart. But Pinhead truly terrified me as a kid, and he still is terrifying. That is, if we're excluding the later films. But the original uh, Hellraiser might even rival the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween as one of the greatest horror films ever made. And this film, and Nightbreed as well, just further that Clive Barker is just a genius horror filmmaker. Just, oh, he's just, uh, he is a genius. Check out Hellraiser if you haven't. So in second place, we have Leatherface. I remember being a kid one day, and I was spending the night at one of my best friend's house. And we were just up playing Madden on his Xbox and stuff like that. And him, him and I got this really morbid curiosity, both just out of nowhere. It was a coincidence to go and steal his uncle's copy, his uncle's uh, VHS copy of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre one night. And we put it in. And after the movie, we were petrified. I wouldn't even go outside of my house. I was just so in shock by what I saw. I remember I'd go out to go play outside, and I thought I'd see Leatherface standing in the tree line by my house. I saw it in my nightmares. I just saw Leatherface everywhere. The original film today is still one of my favorite. It's probably just not even one of my favorite horror films, but just one of my favorite films of all time. The rawness of the original film is just perfect for the type of movie that it is. Now, the later films, to me, are all terrible. The beginning being the only film in the franchise that I... Only other film in the franchise that I sort of like. It feels like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, whereas the remake kind of felt like a boring and mundane slasher. But none of the other films in the franchise are scary at all to me. But I will always remember that original film and just how godly frightening Leatherface was to me. I just remember being sat there with my friend in the summer of 2009, just shocked. He couldn't even speak afterwards. I couldn't either. Leatherface from the original film is truly an icon to me. My favorite kill in the franchise being Jerry's death in the original. All right, and number one, we have The Shape, Michael Myers. Mainly just from the original I'm talking about. I remember when I was a kid back at my old house, we had this big cabinet full of DVDs and VHS tapes. And I remember I was going through the whole cabinet. We had house cold classics in our in our house like Gladiator, Braveheart, Saving Private Ryan, U571, Signs, and all kinds of those movies. Then we had a little corner on the shelf where we had The Fog, It, Salem's Lot, Misery. And then I noticed a white mask on the side of this VHS case. And the film was titled Halloween. So I grabbed it off the shelf and I looked at it and it just looked so intriguing. And I brought it into the kitchen where my mom was on the computer and I asked her what this movie was. And she told me that it was just a movie about a scary man with a knife that kills people and that I couldn't watch it. Well, a year goes by. I'm a whole year older. And one night we go out to eat. And I think we went to Red Lobster, you know, back when corporate owned restaurants were actually still worth the shit and used relatively good ingredients. But that's not the point. And we also had a night of bowling afterwards where I bowled 300 and got my name put on the wall of fame at the bowling alley. Okay, that last part's not true. But I did ask my dad if I could go, ch if we could check out Halloween when we got back. And he said that we could later that night as long as my mom was to never, ever, ever find out about it because I was really young. So we got home and we waited for my brother to fall asleep. And I was expecting just blood soaked carnage. But I didn't get that. And I loved it even more because of that. The original film works on such a deep and profound and more philosophical level to me than a Friday film or a Chucky film or a Nightmare on Elm Street film would to me. That it doesn't need obscene gore. And after a few days, I did rent the second one and I did end up watching the other films as well later on. But none of them really seemed to have, have, seemed to have had that magic that the first film had. And I did see the two Rob Zombie films in theaters as well. And I did actually end up seeing 2018 in theater with my mom. which was I did see it with my dad, and I saw it with my mom too. 
which my mom, I had to, I had to bribe her into that one, but still, uh, Michael Myers was just at his most mysterious and most terrifying in that original film. Is it dated by today's standards? In some ways, sure. But for those of you, let me ask you a question. Those of you's favorite, that, for those of you that your favorite Halloween movie in the franchise is, I don't know, either the two Rob Zombie ones or the Halloween 6 or 2018 or Kills, I'm going to ask you something. What movie do most people gravitate towards in the autumn season? Not Halloween 6, not Halloween 2018, but Halloween 1978. The first horror movie to ever scare me. My favorite kill in the franchise is actually Bob's death in the original film. Alright guys, I had a lot of fun doing this video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'm out. Peace.